Rad is underrated. There. I've said it. I've been playing this extensively for the last couple of weeks and it's just the conclusion that I've come to. It isn't perfect by any means, but it oozes style and humour like the radioactive waste that spilled out over this neopunk world. I'm trademarking neopunk. Remember we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month to the person most active and engaged on the channel as well as the patron. Although this month we're giving every patron a game so it's a bit different but whatever you get the picture. A roguelike worth your precious time or is it a toxic mess? Let's find out. Yes, I can see it in your eyes. The world has gone to pot, several nuclear disasters and no small quantity of radioactive fallout have created a monstrosity of epic proportions. Countless mutated beasts roam the environment and everything from that harmless looking bin to the rocks lay in wait to burst forth and end you. In terms of the narrative, you'll be given voice over dialogue during the gameplay Transference gates could instantly zap someone to faraway places. As you discover relics from the ancient times, and it's also tracked within your menu screens. As you discover new areas of the world, these are then shown. And it's these anecdotes that were a surprisingly motivating factor when playing the game. It felt like you could gain an understanding of this alter earth over several runs. It was the ancients who put the world to sleep and the menders who reawakened it. A little like I saw with a, maybe a game like Everspace, and it works really well. First port of call is choosing one of the characters, who look like rejects from the Goonies, in the best possible sense. More can be unlocked as you progress in the game. It controls very well, almost like a twin stick at times. Everything's tight and responsive, and certain moves will cancel the animation quicker, allowing, for example, a roll when you see that danger's imminent. It shouldn't be underestimated how important that is for a fun and fair gameplay experience. I mentioned in the buy and avoid list that I'm making at the moment that it feels like the slightly strange love child of The Binding of Isaac and Toe Jam and Earl. You begin each level dropped at a random point within a stage. These have some sort of random generation to them and are essentially floating islands just as with Toe Jam. Your main aim in each area will be activating two or more pylon type structures to release the door to the boss area. Think of them as your flaws in Gungeon or Isaac. Monsters roam and various environmental hazards dot the landscape and will try their darndest to rob you of your precious hearts shown up here. Now, while I would have liked to see some further varieties of enemies in the earlier stages, the game actually has a very large number. They're drip fed in so that as you start to conquer, you'll see more and more, but perhaps a touch more variety in those earlier stages would help when you're on a losing streak. The thing is, rather than gradually leveling up, you'll become more and more irradiated until the inevitable moment your body simply cannot take any more and burst forth some random and often monstrously delightful mutation. These are your exo-mutations. Mutate! I absolutely love this system, and unlike others where you will eventually know the effects of an item just by looking at it, you'll always have that element of surprise with those. There are other mutations that can be applied through purchase or other acquisitions, and they're known as endomutations. They often buff your existing abilities in some way, like increasing the range of that fiery burning mess coming from the stump where your arm used to reside. As well as killing all the buddies of that Stranger Things Big Bad in Season 2, you'll also be acquiring serious amounts of Bill. and some Scratch. Oh, and some Cash. They're just cassette tapes that act as the currency. And the narrator does an excellent job of adding a touch of 90s arcade charm to the proceedings. Choice and has a bloody good vocabulary for different ways of saying cash, or cheddar, or some buns, or wonga, whatever you get it. Each level will be filled with secrets to discover, from hidden away bunkers to small micro-missions for those inhabitants still alive within them. I would have liked perhaps a more fleshed out mission system, but I think they went with the path of least resistance to the gameplay. Delving into the underground or uncovering the fog of war through exploration will eventually uncover some form of shop. Here you can spend that cold hard cash you've acquired throughout the time playing and these can be a real lifeline when your health is waning. So what comes next? You've beaten all the big bads, milked the area of every available resource and it's time to go boss fighting. These are essentially super versions of the mutants with large health bars and some other nasty moves to cause you all kinds of aggro. Yeah. 
When you inevitably die, you'll be back to square one, but not entirely empty-handed. Between levels, you can return to the hub area. In here, you can spend some cash and also store or withdraw funds from the banking system if you meet the prerequisites. Perks can be gained through becoming a premium bank member aka store lots of cash with them. You'll find that you can change out the default baseball bat here as well, which means runs can vary slightly, but again, it felt like this main hub area was severely underutilized. You'll find yourself walking into characters to get a dialogue that doesn't exist, which is a shame as it would have been a welcome addition and give the feeling of continuity between runs a much needed boost. Add in the staple for the genre, some runs will just be rubbish. It's just part of the parcel and in no way deterred me from trying again. As well as the core gameplay mechanics, you'll find a leaderboard fueled daily run, which offers various mutations on the standard gameplay. These very common again for the genre. The core gameplay is fun and rewarding with a real coolness about it that shouldn't be underrated. Don your neon shell suits and grab a baseball bat and head out into the wasteland and I don't think you'll be disappointed. There's actually far more depth here than initially meets the eye. There are many exo mutations to unlock and they completely change the way that you play as the character. Take for example one run where I became a crab creature that could duck under the ground and then burst forth exploding all the enemies around me. Or another where I had a mutant on my back that I could then throw on the ground and use as a turret. There are also a large number of boss enemies to work your way through, even if you do finish the game quite quickly. But you probably won't. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20, while the controls score 18 out of 20. Now, visually, it's been a bit of a mixed bag since launch. Initially, the performance was not overly great at all times. It was almost like there was a memory leak and it would just dip slightly. It's been patched since then. I'm not sure quite what they've done. It looks like possibly they've reined in the detail, draw distance on shadows just a touch, but then it also might look a little bit crisper. I'm not entirely sure. It does have a slight blurriness to it, but you can turn off the CRTV effect over the top which not everyone's going to enjoy, I quite liked it. It definitely worked with the aesthetic and mood they were going for. I enjoyed the environments and thought that they worked well, and thankfully the performance is definitely better. In handheld, unfortunately, it is a slightly blurrier experience, but again, it seems to be running smoothly. Overall, I'd say visuals get 14 out of 20. In terms of the audio, I thought the music was fantastic. They've really nailed it. It will transition at several points throughout a level so you aren't stuck with that single sound and it's quite dynamic as well. Sound effects are okay, the sound of your bat as it cracks mutant skulls is suitably satisfying and when you do a charged attack by holding the button down, yeah that's uh, got the Zelda vibes in me flowing. Overall I like the audio and sounds, but, and there is one but. For me, it's the narrator. I loved him, I thought he was brilliant, but I can also see that every time you pick up more than four of those cassettes, he's going to say a similar thing, and that over several hundred hours is gonna great. Extermination. On the whole though, audio is decent, and I give it 16 out of 20. The game costs £15.99, $19.99, or €19.99, and I'm not gonna lie, I bought it the second it came up on the eShop, mainly because of Tim Schafer. For me, the price is absolutely bang on. There's lots of things to see and do, there's tons of secret areas and lore, as well as that daily run. You'll find permanent unlocks, everything that makes a floor clearer like this good value, and a decent price. Still, Gungeon is cheaper and with its updates, and multiplayer, and additional content, it's probably the superior choice if you've not played that game. However, Rad does a lot right and I have a feeling they're going to just add more and more to the game. Value scores 16 out of 20. There really is a lot to like about Rad, and thankfully they're working hard to make it the experience that it was initially intended performance-wise. I didn't even go into the artifact systems whereby you gain permanent upgrades each run, but that's just the thing. There's far more to this game than I think most gave it credit. Overall for me, it scores a switch-up score of 80%. Thanks so much to all our patrons, you guys are amazing for supporting us, and I was able to source 64 games for you, which is incredible. I'll be sending you those to your patron accounts tomorrow. 
A huge thank you to Cubic Games for helping with that. Those guys are incredible. They are a brilliant developer and publisher. Great job. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!